Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Tom, and in this video, I'm going to talk about hexadecimal numbers. So we've got hexadecimal. So in the last video, I talked about binary numbers, and we also talked about kind of what a number is and the different bases a number can be uh, in, in the earlier videos. Uh, but this video is going to be about something a little bit different than binary or decimal it's actually going to be a base 16 number system so hexadecimal is base 16 and if you remember we got this the word decimal right here this is a base 10 system and then we had binary which was a base 2 system so what it's saying when we have 10 or 16 is just how many possible symbols that we can have when we write a number so in the case of hexadecimal, we actually use the, let me get that, make that a little bigger. We use the same as base 10, but when we get to nine, we actually have six more possible digits to go. So what we do is we use letters. So this is A, B, that that's a pretty ugly C there and F so A is equal to 10 B is equal to 11 C is equal to 12 D is equal to 13 E is 14 and F is 15 okay so hexadecimal has a, a lot of uses but we're not going to talk about those here if you want to look at the next video or maybe the next two videos I'll, I'll use hexadecimal, binary, and everything in, in a few examples, and we'll look at some stuff like hex editors and different things like that. So if you're watching this video as a standalone, try to find the playlist in either on the website, leftfield.com, or attached to this video somewhere uh, on YouTube. So go ahead and check those out if you want to see examples of hex, but here we're just going to learn how to convert hex into decimal or into binary and then back again. And I'll show you two different ways to do that. So the first way, and probably the easiest way to go from a decimal number, or base 10, to hex, is the division method. So I'm going to do it with a, a small number here. I'm just going to take uh, 140. So let's say 140. And what we do is, so remember this is base 10, this is base 16. Uh, just like we did in the binary video, we're going to divide by whatever the uh, base that we want is. So I'm going to take 140 and I'm going to divide it by 16. And what I get when I divide 140 by 16 is I get 8. Okay, so I get 8, but there's a remainder on here, and that remainder is 12. Okay, now, if this number here in yellow, this 8, if this was not one of my possible hex digits, then I would take that over and divide again. And I'll do another example just like that. Uh, but here, 8 is in my list, so I know that I can write 8. And 12 is also in my list as a remainder, which is C, so I can go ahead and write C. So 140 in base 10, and I'm going to write this little 10 here, this means base 10, is equal to 8C in base 16. This little 16 represents a hex number. Okay, so pretty easy, right? So I'm going to leave that up there, and let's do a slightly more difficult example. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, pick a bigger number now. So I'm going to pick the number, let's do 1,532. All right, so if I got a 1,532, I'm going to do the same thing. Divide by 16. And what I end up getting is 95 with a remainder of 12. Okay, so what do I do now? Uh, this 95, not in my list over here. So what I actually have to do 
is take this 95 and I bring it back over. So now I have 95 over here. But this 12, this is still good. It's still over here. It's still going to be C, just like it was over here. So I'm going to write this C down on the right. And then I take my 95 and I divide it again by 16. And when I do that, I'm going to get 5 remainder 15. Okay, so now I've actually got two numbers that are in my, my list here of the possible digits in hexadecimal. So 15 is F and 5, well 5 is just 5, so I'm left here. So the number is not CF5, it's actually read in reverse here. So the final answer would be 5FC in base 16 is equal to 1532 in base 10. And you notice I'm putting these little numbers here, and this is actually really important because this number here, 1532, it can be a hexadecimal number. We just you know, we, we, we pull numbers out of here. It could be hex, could be decimal. We don't really know. So we want to put these on here so that we know what we're looking at. All right, so let's take a, another look at how we can change from decimal. So as I said before, this is probably the easiest way, just the division method. Uh, but you can actually go at it in a slightly different way. So let's take the number... 120. Now, if I don't know the division method, I can actually figure it out by using binary first. So if I take this number and I first change it into binary, I can then very easily use that binary to figure out the hexadecimal. So first thing I want to do here is change this into uh, binary. And the binary for this would be well, if I divide this by 2 or, or use anything like that, I could. But I'll write down the binary here. It's going to be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay. So in this case, we have a total of 8 bits. Now, I didn't have to write this one down over here, but I did, and I did it for a specific reason. When you look at this, you can actually group 4 bits and each of these four bits, the maximum number can be 15. If I have all ones, it's 15, which is equal to F. In this case, I have a one here, so that's equal to eight. Here, I have one plus two plus four, which is seven. So 120 is actually equal to 78 in hexadecimal. All right, so if I gave you another binary number, for example, if I gave you 1111101100, you could take this and you could figure out that this is, well, 8 plus 4 is 12, so that's going to give me C. And then 8 plus uh, 2 plus 1 is 11, which is B. And then all of these is F. So this number here in binary is equal to FBC in hexadecimal. And it's really easy to go from hexadecimal or from binary to hexadecimal. You just count in groups of four. Not hard at all. Alright, uh, but let's say I gave you a number in hexadecimal and I want you to go backwards. So if I want to go from from hex to decimal, well you could very easily take each of the digits, turn them into binary, and then change it to decimal. Or you could use another method, which is multiplying by the power of 2. So let's say I give you the hexadecimal number. Let's pick something a little larger this time to start with. Uh, let's go with 1,128, base 16. And how would I do this? Well, I'm going to take actually each digit, and I'm going to start here. I'm going to take this digit, 8, and what I do is I just multiply 8 by 16 to the power of 0. 
So 16 to the power of 0 is 1, so I'm left with 8. Okay. Then I'm going to take, let me pick a different color here. Then I'm going to take the next digit. So this goes here. And then I take the next digit, 2, and I'm going to multiply by 16 to the power of 1. So that gives me 32. And then I take, as you can probably guess, 1, uh, 16 to the power of 2, and that gives me 256. And let's go with yellow for the last one here. You're probably seeing why I picked the numbers 1 here, because this is going to be 16 to the power of 3, and 1 times that gives me 4,096. And what you do with these is you just add them up. So I'm going to add all of these together, and I end up getting 4,392. Okay. Yes, okay. So I add all these up, and that means 1,128 is equal to 4,392 in base 10. Okay. So as I said, the alternative would be taking each one of these, and you could turn it into you know, this, this is going to be 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, 0. And then you could figure out what this is as a decimal number. So it's going to be pretty big. I actually don't know off the top of my head what this is going to be over here. But you could do it and change it to a decimal. But this way is probably a lot quicker as long as you have a calculator because if you get down here to these bigger numbers, it's going to be quite complicated. All right, so that's the basic overview of everything as far as a hexadecimal. There's nothing really complicated about it. It's just one more number system. It just happens to be a number system that's very commonly used in computers. All right, uh, so if you have any questions, leave them here in the YouTube comment section, or you can go ahead to the Left Peel website. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.